Brian Peters here with you with a look at your Alabama weather for this chilly start to a Sunday on January the 24th. This is the Weather Extreme video. There's a look at lows that we've seen since midnight, and it's definitely a rather chilly morning, especially with those teen values up there at Fort Payne and Gadsden and across uh, Haleyville and Coleman, where there's a little bit of still, uh, or there was a little bit of snow cover. And it looks like uh, we should begin a warming trend later today. Our surface map features a large high-pressure system that is moving across the southeastern U.S., settled in very nicely. The uh, snowstorm is a kind of a, a long-remembered thing now and uh, moving off into the Atlantic. In the upper atmosphere, we're coming under a ridge, and so that northwesterly flow keeping us rather cool. But as the uh, ridge moves over us later today and into Monday, we are going to warm up nicely. Temperatures across the eastern half of the country are quite cold. Uh, and especially with the snow cover that they have up there, that snow helping to uh, definitely uh, allow us to lose a lot of uh, whatever heating we may have had. Across central Alabama, temperatures were fairly uniform across the area. At uh, the time of this map, uh, all the major stations, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Anniston, reporting 22 degrees, so kind of a uniform morning, but of course the colder in the northeastern corner and some of those normally colder spots. Watch warning map is somewhat uh, free of action. Uh, the the reddish uh, pink values you see out there in Texas and southern New Mexico, those are red flag warnings for the very dry weather. Uh, we still have uh, off the uh, eastern coast of the United States, we still have uh, some wind issues in the offshore waters, and those are some uh, Freezing and frost advisories down in Florida and uh, extending down into central Florida. And we've got the purple out in uh, the uh, northern Rockies. That's uh, some additional um, uh, winter weather uh, advisories. QPF-wise, it looks like our, our rain is going to come probably uh, primarily uh, early Tuesday into early Wednesday. And it looks like rainfall amounts on the order of probably... Uh, a half to one and a quarter inches are likely. Storm Prediction Center has no severe weather areas and just a small area for thunder over the Four Corners area for day one. Day two, we see some thunder over the uh, southern Great Lakes extending back into northern Missouri and over the lower Mississippi River Valley. And for day three, the primary uh, thunder will be over extreme south Florida and the central Gulf Coast. All right, let's take a look at modeling this morning. Here's the 06 GFS model run. There's the upper air chart. Uh, for uh, Monday, and we can see that uh, we have a fast-moving uh, shortwave coming into the area, and uh, that will generate a surface low with the high moving off uh, the Atlantic coast, the southeast Atlantic coast. Uh, we're going to see southerly, moisture, southerly flow return, and that's going to warm things up, but also bring moisture back into the picture. So Monday is going to be a bit of a transition day as we begin to uh, see the, uh, the clouds increase, especially during the latter half of the day. Tuesday, the um, upper flow is is kind of interesting uh, because the trough uh, definitely becomes oriented from northeast to southwest, and uh, that causes a problem because that does drag a front into the area as the low moves through the Great Lakes, the surface low drags the front into the area, but there's no real push to get that front to move out of the area. Uh, so the result is that on Wednesday, that upper flow pretty much has a southwesterly component to it uh, over the southeastern U.S., and uh, that will keep the front from moving very far. And as it does on Wednesday, we're going to, uh, or uh, on Tuesday and into Wednesday, we're going to see little ripples moving along this flow, and that will help to uh, generate some additional uh, rain. So by Wednesday, uh, we should be seeing the rain ending probably um, by early afternoon. And interesting to note that the uh, European is in pretty close agreement to the GFS. Uh, you remember yesterday the European was a lot closer to land with the surface low. Now they're down in the vicinity of Tampa, which is where uh, the GFS was suggesting yesterday. That uh, trough finally gets its acts together and begins to push through on Thursday. So that should definitely dry us out on Thursday uh, and also cool us off a bit too. Uh, as the front moves uh, down into Florida and into the Gulf of Mexico uh, with that additional push from the upper air pattern. The upper air pattern stays northwesterly on Friday, so Thursday and Friday are going to be rather cool days, uh, but the high is uh, centered over the Gulf of Mexico, so we don't see a really just real strong uh, northerly fetch for the uh, surface pattern. 
The pattern in the upper atmosphere on Saturday goes nearly zonal across the uh, lower half of the United States. We've got a little uh, short wave moving through the flow uh, in the vicinity of Paducah, Kentucky. Uh, but thanks to the fact that there shouldn't be any moisture, uh, we'll probably see nothing but a little bit of clouds as the high sen- uh, settles in over South Florida. I mean, the euro in pretty good agreement. However, the euro is a little more bullish on the warming that we see here uh, for uh, uh, Saturday into Sunday. The uh, upper air pattern on Sunday uh, is uh, definitely taking on a southwesterly uh, direction for us. So that will be bringing some moisture out of the Pacific. Uh, but uh, we should be staying dry as the high remains in a position over the state of Florida. Looking out into voodoo country, we have a big system to deal with uh, around the 2nd of February. Uh, this uh, closed low is likely to produce a uh, strong surface low in the mid-Mississippi River Valley, and that's going to uh, produce the possibility of some severe weather from the lower Mississippi River Valley up into the Ohio River Valley, but it will also be producing uh, uh, quite a winter storm uh, over to the west of this uh, low over parts of uh, Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, the Dakotas. So uh, another big storm for us to be looking for. The pattern stays somewhat cool for us in the southeastern U.S. with another fairly significant trough around the 5th of February, and that certainly has a, a cool look to it. And then we see that cool look begin to change as a uh, fairly substantial ridge enters the picture around the 8th of February, but we still right behind that ridge, we have another uh, trough to deal with. So the screaming message here is that the weather pattern is going to remain active, and that's what we expect for this time of year. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video. James Spann should be back in the saddle with the next edition first thing on Monday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for notes on Alabama's weather. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and Godspeed.